Hi everyone, Affinity Photo. What a great alternative to Photoshop it is. Over the next few months, I'm putting together a series of guides on my YouTube channel for you. I've got loads planned, so do subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications when fresh uploads go online. Once you've seen one of the videos, if you want to skip this intro, then just check the timestamp down below in the description and you can go straight to the tutorial. start here in Adobe Bridge so I've located an image within my folders here from my London Brutalist tours. We have a shot here of the BT Tower, formerly known as the Post Office Tower. Now to open in Affinity you've got a couple of options and the first one is just right click on the image, open with, you can find Affinity within the menu here. Most often Photoshop will be the default but I've set Affinity as the default. To do that just go to Bridge in the menu Go to Preferences, come down to File Type Associations, and then look for your RAW files. So you will find Canon, Sony, everything's in here. And I'm on Fuji, so you just go down to Fuji, and in this menu here, it will usually say Photoshop, select Affinity, and in future, after clicking OK, when you double click on an image, it will open straight into Affinity for you. So we'll double click. The picture comes into Affinity. The good thing about Affinity, when you set up your workspaces like this, I have some left and right, it does remember this every time you close and open Affinity. So you can have those set and go straight away into your own workspace. I'm just gonna zoom out by using Command or Control minus. And then I'm going to just rotate this as it's a portrait. If you don't find the rotate icons up here, if you right click and customize toolbar, and you will find them within the customization menu section here. So just drag what you need up onto the toolbar. I do find that images come in quite low contrast with Affinity, a bit like Photoshop a few years ago. I do start with a curves adjustment just to add some additional contrast to start with. If I turn that off and on, you can see how that's already improved things on the image. I still think a lot of the time images need a little bit more of a contrast boost, so I do move these sliders contrast and clarity, which is mid-tone contrast. I quite like this as a high contrast image, so I'm going to punch that quite a bit there. And by doing that, it has altered the exposure, so we'll just punch that exposure up a little bit. And let's just check the highlights and shadows. So we've got up here highlight and shadow warning, so there's some highlights just coming through here showing red as the warning. People get a little bit over the top on highlights and you know if white is white then that's fine. And I'm happy to leave some highlights that are white but I will pull these ones back a little bit. If we turn that off, I think that's more than acceptable down there. That is a very, very bright part of a high contrast image. If you wanna check the shadows as well. So they're going deep black in the top here, but everything else looks fine. And make a choice on whether you want black to show in your picture or not. And I think I'm quite happy. There's a few lines coming through, but this is very much dark black. I'm more than happy to leave that. So already we've seen a huge improvement and I've not done very much at all. And remember, if you get things right in camera, you don't need to do much in the way of adjustments. So always, where you can, get it right in camera, spend as little time in post-production as you need. The only thing after this is just really to sort out the straightening. Going over to the crop tool. And we've got the straighten button up here. So we'll just drag that across this line here. We'll just pull in that crop. If you use opposite corners, that just saves a little bit of time. I 
And if you were to cycle the overlays, this O on the keyboard. And if you get something like the golden spiral, if you press shift zero, and that will actually flip around so you can check where things sit within the spiral. So when you're finished, click on develop and you're now ready to do any further work if it needs it. And if not, then go up and print or if you want to export to a PDI, you've got your options for exporting and resizing as well. So that's the very basics for working on an image in Affinity Photo. Like I said, if you get it right in camera, there's very little that needs to be done. I hope you enjoyed this. The next section I'll look at is turning this into a black and white, so do look out for that video.